Hello Nuggets. I was just watching my video about the carnivore diet that I put up today and uh, I talk about a dream in it and I look back through my videos and unless I missed it I have not done a video on lucid dreaming uh, which is something I can do and it's something I taught myself to do so I thought I'd make a video about it. I, I'm, I don't know that much about it. I'm just going to tell you what I do right and how it worked for me. Um, I think one of the reasons that in that dream I was aware of the fact I was in the in a dream or maybe not specifically a dream but I was aware that this reality was very different like there was a, there was a dichotomy between the existence I had in the dream and my existence I didn't know what my real existence was if that's my real existence it's Django hey Django I'm gonna shut the door All day, man. All day. It's a fucking nightmare. My life is hell. Those dogs do that all day. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. <laughs> nothing there. All right. So I was aware that there was a different existence, a different reality. I just didn't know, you know, I, I didn't recognize this life. Anyway, I'm not going to go back over. What's the video if you want? But the point is... I think that awareness comes from the work I've done to, book, to do lucid dreaming. Whether that was a lucid dream or not, I don't know, but it changed the context of the dream because of the ability I have. So let me tell you how I do it, right? So a lot of this is born from being an insomniac, right? Because when you have insomnia, or at least when I have insomnia, I have spent many years lying in bed trying to force myself to fall asleep trying every method i've tried the rhythm method which works pretty well which is where you kind of you tap a beat right man and then you over the course of a couple of minutes you slow it down and that kind of puts you in a state and it does work the problem is you get so tired you run out <laughs> i get so tired i run out of energy at the end and I wake myself up because I'm stressed. I'm like, oh, I've got to keep doing the beat. And now I'm awake again. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um, well, I've tried that and I've tried other different methods. And one of the great things about lucid dreaming is it's an acceptance of the fact that you're not very good at sleep. So you're going to use that weakness, that flaw, you're going to use it as uh, something powerful. You're going to turn it into a bonus, a benefit to you. And one of those benefits is that I can get into a dream-like state where my mind is going off on a journey. I'm not hyper aware of the fact that I'm just lying in bed and just like, you know, looking at the clock going up. It's one o'clock, it's two o'clock, it's three o'clock, it's four o'clock. Oh, it's seven o'clock, time to get up, which is usually, you know, my bad routine. So what I do when I'm lying in bed, and I can't sleep, is I close my eyes and I try to see colors. And this is actually a little difficult to do because when you try to see with your eyes closed, there is a desire to open your eyes, right? So a, 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 a sleep mask does help with this because if you open your eyes, it's black, obviously, and you have less desire to open your eyes. I don't quite know why that works, but it does for me. So it's not essential, but if you have a sleep mask, it helps. So I'm trying to see color. And here's the thing, you're looking for even the slightest suggestion. And obviously it's black, so there is no color. There, it, there is actually a name for the color of black of your eyes closed. It's like a dark gray. Some writer came up with that. I, can't, I should have researched it. But there is a, a name for that color. But it's not that. You're actually trying to see something. And sometimes it will be a purple. Sometimes it will be a green. And sometimes, actually, what you can do is if you close your eyes and if you just push on the corner of your eyes... You'll see flashes of light. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever tried that before. You can actually do that as you're just lying there to give you a flash of light. And it kind of sparks your imagination a little bit. And now you can suddenly see a color. Right? So purple happens a lot in my dreams. Um, and dark blues and indigos. So because they're very close to black. And so, you know, I'm sure there's some connection there. Um, and what will happen is it's almost like a, a kaleidoscope right or a spirograph if you remember those it's this shifting morpheus shape 
of color of black with purple let's say purple happens a lot with me so and they'll it the purple will kind of throb and swell and come in and then move and then as i focus on that color usually by not looking at it directly there's probably an actual physical reason why you don't look at it directly it's peripheral but as i'm focusing on not looking at it if that makes sense just like letting it happen around that flat pattern that almost looks like um what would you call it? Almost like a matte painting around the edge of a Christmas card. You know when you get a Christmas card and it's got like frosted snowflakes around the edge and then within it a picture? That's kind of what the purple looks like to me. But dimension will come the longer you look at it. So eventually you'll start to see a lighter or a darker purple behind it shifting over and then that will resolve into color. And before you know it, you don't know what you're seeing and sometimes it will be some crazy shit. One of the things my mind does a lot is it will flip through millions of faces. The face will just morph. It will be an orc, and then it will be Tom Cruise, and then it will be Emily Blunt. It's nice when Emily turns up. And then it will be um, whatever, oh, Emma Watson, who's overrated, or it will be, <laughs> you know, like it will be this shifting thing that happens where these faces are just like flipping through right and at that point I am aware that I'm in this dream slate state and I'm aware that I'm lying in bed and I'm letting my mind take control I am not controlling it I'm just letting it go where it is that's almost to me that's like level one of lucid dreaming you're not dreaming right because literally you know you can just open your eyes right you're that close to it there's no difficulty in that at all but your imagination is literally just running wild. It's like meditation, right? It's just doing its own thing and you're just following along for the ride. The second level of that is that one of those images of those flickering images or colors or shapes, I get a lot of geometry, not just faces. Sometimes I'll get squares and hexagons and dodecahedrons and like all of these crazy intricate shapes um, and a lot of vectors, like vector lines moving. Um, eventually that will resolve into a coherent image that is the beginning of the dream. And if that happens, I am now on that dream journey and I'm less aware that I'm lying in bed. But I have this little kind of, how can I describe it? It's like, <laughs> do you remember the, 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 um, the emergency stop on a train? <laughs> I've all, I always know I've got that there. Right, it will take a bit of effort to go. Okay, come out of this. Come out of this. Come out, and come back to, you know, being regular asleep, or come up back to opening my eyes. But I know it's there, and now I'm on this journey, and that's lucid dreaming. Right, you're in the dream. To some extent, you can control it. It's it's difficult to know if I am controlling it because I find that I do forget those dreams very quickly. If I don't wake up and just write it down. Um, I don't remember the dream. I remember the feeling. <laughs> oh my God. Um, but it is, I, I remember the feeling of having, of, of controlling the dream, but I don't usually remember how I controlled it. But regardless of whether I'm controlling it or not, to me, that is lucid dreaming. And it's something I taught myself to do, right? And it starts with just, when you lie down and close your eyes, try to see, try to see. I would focus on color. There might be other ways of doing it. Maybe you can see an elephant or a whatever. I don't know. But color to me is easy because you have a color in front of you or lack of color. You have black or you have that kind of umbral gray of the inside of your eyelids. Well, look at it. Keep looking. Don't stop looking just because your eyes are closed. And eventually you'll start to realize, wait, I'm seeing patterns in there. I'm seeing shapes. I'm seeing color. Is that always there? Is that, am I seeing that or is that just my mind projecting? It's obviously your mind projecting, but you don't know that at the time, you know. If you focus your energy in that moment, you know, and, and you're, you will feel yourself starting to relax and then you'll go off into the dream. Anyway, that's lucid dreaming and it works really well. And I think it's actually affect my regular dreaming now. I feel at times almost like I can't dream without it being a lucid dream i just said something that's wrong there it's not that it's a lucid dream it's that it's it's so much more visceral my dreams now 
That makes sense. So even if it's not a lucid dream, I am so much more involved in my dreams. Like that they are just tangible things like and it's it can be a little traumatic actually because they're not all good dreams my dream last night was horrible it was really upsetting it was beautiful while I was in that world but when I woke up and I looked out into my garden here in Los Angeles I was depressed I was like oh I want to be in Littlehampton <laughs> it might be more of a sign of my mind state but anyway that's lucid dreaming if you've got any questions ask away um if you have a better method, I would love to hear it, actually, because this this is a really interesting skill. I don't know whether this is what they used to call astral projection, and I have no idea what's happening. I think it's just my imagination, but whatever it is, it feels like I've trained my mind to do something, and it, it feels good to know that I have some measure of control over the subconscious. And um, yeah, so any comments, leave them below, um, and let me know. Let's have a talk about it. It's fascinating work.